Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Um, today is going to be actually a mixed media canvas um, video. Um, so I actually went to Michael's um, and they had these recollections brand, had these, um, what is it, 12 by 12 inches, um, like cardstock, scrap paper, um, things um for sale for like 350 and then sunday and, and this past monday um they had a 20 percent off coupon even on sale items so anyways these are the papers that i um found and that's what inspired me to make this canvas today and i thought i'd do something new in this video is actually demonstrate the things i um think of using for this uh project so I have my um, inks there, archival ink in sepia, archival ink in coffee and jet black, and distressed inks in gathered twigs and a wilted rose. And then these are the stamps that I am planning to use, again, the Bow Bunny brand. I like this brand because they're inexpensive. Uh, I believe I get these stamp sets for $4.99 to $5.99 and probably a couple cents cheaper on um, Blitzy.com. And then my stencils, I have this wood um, Eiffel Tower that I got for $0.99 cents at Michael's a while back. And then um, using some texture paste. And then I'm going to use these Distress inks. Um, they are an antique linen, uh, walnut stain, and vintage photo. And then I'm going to be using this tacky glue, and you, any glue will suffice. Um, that's just what I had on hand. And then, of course, I'm going to be using two um, gel mediums. Uh, one is the Jane Davenport, and the other one's the Tim Hall's Distress gel medium. And that's because one's almost finishing, and then I have my backup. Um, which is the new Tim Holtz one. So I'm going to be using an 8x10 um, canvas here and then I'm going to also be using some red, white um, acrylic paint and then some white gesso from the Jane Davenport line. And then um, I'm also going to be using the brand um, the Maj Page Turquoise Clear Gel Sealer. And here I'm just demonstrating a little bit of the um, things I cut out from different pages from those um, pads I showed you earlier. So not everything in here I end up using because I realized the canvas is a little too small. But anyways, these served for inspiration. And here I'm just showing you um, how you can use different things uh, from the different papers um, in your, you know, uh, canvas to create your thing so here I'm just showing you the bird cage it was actually in a different scrapbook and I just took that out and um, so pretty much I do end up using them for the most part all these pieces um, so uh, let's get started here I'm just using that um, I believe it's like envelopes or post-it uh, postcards I'm sorry um, that have this handwriting and I'm just kind of distressing them a bit, making sure um, they look kind of ripped. Now I did kind of like like square type um, shapes, but you can do strips if that is easier, long strips. And here I'm gluing them while the canvas is laid horizontal with my Jane Davenport gel medium, but I end up using the canvas actually vertical. So this just helped place everything um, where I want it and just kind of create a collage, just kind of start piecing them together and uh, my brush is dry, so that helps. And I'm just really trying to squeeze every little bit of gel medium that's left in that tube. Um, I don't like anything to go to waste. So here's the finished um, background that I have um, sealed down with that gel medium. And then I'm going to get a little bit of white gesso and I'm gonna water it 
down a little bit so that way I can still see the background and this is just gonna kind of help show the rest of the other colors that I want to use on this canvas that way it doesn't look too yellowy since the background was more on the vintage um, style so here I'm just using my heat embossing tool to um, set everything down and then I'm going to mix this red acrylic paint with uh, white and I'm just going to keep adding white until I am satisfied with the color. I wanted some like a pale vintage pink and then I add a little bit of water too so that, that way it's not as harsh. And then I'm just going to kind of use this uh, paintbrush to just make some lines and randomly uh, sketch out the, the edges of this canvas. And then I'm going to grab this wider brush with a little bit of water and kind of, um, you know, blend everything. And then I'm also going to paint the edges around the canvas so that way it doesn't stay white. Then I have this Mosh Posh um, Turquoise Clear Gel. It's transparent, which helps. And I'm just gonna randomly um, blend this out around the canvas. And I'm actually focusing more on the like framing um, side, like on the sides of this canvas, um, leaving the middle pretty much uh, lighter. And then I'm going to use my heat tool to um, set that. Once everything is dry, I'm going to use that antique linen spray, Distress Ink Spray. And then I'm just going to use my brush to kind of just move it around and blend it some more. And again, I'm just focusing on these, um, on the corners, pretty much. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to heat that so I know that the stain doesn't move and I can add layers with other colors. So now I have a vintage photo. And I'm going to do the same process I did with the previous color. So since vintage photo is a little bit on the darker side, I used my brush to move it around and then easily blend it so I don't have any harsh lines with this ink um, applicator. And then I'm um, using the last bit of what's left of this gel medium on that tube um, to seal everything down. And again, I'm using my heat tool to set everything. I use this uh, all throughout the process so that I can move quicker so everything would dry faster. I'm very impatient. <laughs> So next I'm using Archival Ink in Sepia and I'm using the Bow Bunny Rough It Up stamp set in that crackle and I am just pretty much randomly um, putting this all over and using uh, first, second, and third generation stamping here. And it's just an easy way to add some um, texture and that crackle effect without actually using any crackle paste or paint. And then I use that um, sentiment that says dreamer on that bow bunny dream stamp set. Um, but it didn't stamp. I didn't get a good impression. So then I go back in and try to get another go at it. And it kind of worked out. Uh, but I'll fix it later. I'll end up uh, putting stuff on top of that. So then I get the um, clock that comes in that same stamp set. And I find myself gravitating to this stamp set a lot because I really did like everything in it. I like the balloons, the clock, and um, there's a little bicycle in there which I end up using as well. Oh, here we go. 
and so um, I end up using black for this one because I want it kind of more color uh, something to pop out everything was pretty much really vintage looking and I don't get a quite uh, good impression on the bike but that is fine I end up um, putting one of my elements on that spot where it, I didn't get a good impression of the bike and so you can hardly tell so next I'm going to start moving to my pieces that I'm going to be using on the canvas and for some reason it didn't show my camera didn't um, record me using the distress stains that I used to kind of um, create that vintage style on the canvas I used the same technique on the Eiffel Tower and it didn't show it for some reason but um, all I'm doing now is going in with my blending tool and using archival ink in jet black and I'm just adding it to towards the sides of that Eiffel Tower just so it stands out a little bit more next I'm getting all my pieces that I plan on um, gluing down to the canvas and just kind of distressing them a bit I'm using distress ink and in gathered twigs and with my blending tool just um, focusing on the sides of each piece and just blending them out making them look a little bit more on the vintage side and these are um, white flowers and I didn't want them to be too on the white side so I go in with withered rose and just kind of blend very little on there just so it matches with everything else then I get the archival ink in library green and blend that on the green leaves just so it looks a little bit darker and here I have that boot, boot from um, that fabric that came with the pack and uh, I cut out this um, key as well and I'm just distressing them a little bit with that same distress ink in gathered twigs. So I distressed the rest of the um, items that I was going to use on my canvas and like I said I didn't end up using them all so I just saved them for maybe another project. So here I'm back with my canvas and then I decided I wanted to add some butterflies. So I grabbed some of this mixed media cardstock from Tim Holtz and I grabbed my Bow Bunny um, Flutter stamp set and I used the two small ones and one of the larger butterflies and I used black archival ink and start stamping them. Now for some reason they weren't sticking to my acrylic block so sometimes I had to do it just with you know pressing down with my fingers. Here I have all the butterflies I plan to use and then originally I wanted to color them with those Arteza um, pen brushes and then I decided I want them all turquoise so I went in with my um, blending tool and used archival ink in um, paradise teal and then I am gluing them one on top of the other that way when I'm gonna I want a, like a 2d or 3d whatever it's called uh, effect on my canvas so I glued one on top of the other so that way um, when I place it on the canvas you don't see any of the cardstock you see, it looks like it's a, an actual butterfly and then next I just um, use my blending tool and cover up the edges of the butterfly so you don't see any of the cardstock color so then I place everything where I think I want and take a picture of it so I don't forget and I end up placing things differently than it is now but that way I kind of had a, a feel for where I wanted things 
So then I decided I wanted some more texture. I thought it was a little bit bland, so I go in with my uh, texture paste here. Now this one is not like modeling paste or embossing paste. It actually, uh, some of it will stay white, but it's meant to be painted on. And so some of it will dry transparent or it'll dry uh, to the colors that you already have on the canvas. And maybe it's also because I didn't let it dry on its own. I did use my heat embossing tool to speed up the process. So um, some of it dried pretty transparent, but at least it gave me some texture. As you can see here, the white kind of muted down a little bit. So now I'm ready to place my Eiffel Tower. So I want to know where these flowers are going to go before I do that. And so I find a spot and use my Tim Holtz um, gel medium with a dry brush to seal that down. Then I get my tacky glue and I go ahead and get my Eiffel Tower wood piece and start placing it and I did all that off camera I guess. I don't know what I was doing. Oh yeah, I had to, um, I opened it and it, there was no hole so nothing was coming out so I grabbed some scissors and I opened it so uh, the glue would come out. Then I uh, place the Eiffel Tower where I want it and just kind of get rid of the excess glue that's coming out of there. And once again, I get my uh, heat embossing tool to heat set everything quickly so that way it's not moving around. And uh, next I uh, grab my gel medium again and start placing everything where I want it. And this is where I said, oh, it needs more, you know, interest. So I grabbed some of that white acrylic paint and add a little bit of water and start um, making these splots or splashes or <laughs> just kind of dots around um, the canvas. I thought it needed a little bit of more color. And then I think now I'm ready to actually glue everything down. I don't know how many times I've said, I'm going to glue them. I'm going to glue them. <laughs> so this piece that I'm laying down right here, um, I mean, I'm laying it down just as is. And towards the end, I decided that I wanted to make it look like if it was distressed and you know, kind of coming off like an old paper coming off or, you know, just kind of ripped. Um, so I start messing with it and my camera actually shut off on me. So you won't see that process, but you will see it in either the pictures or at the very end um, about, you know, the finished product. Now I'm just kind of seeing where I want those butterflies and uh, they, I had that big one right where um, the stamp uh, dreamer, the first stamp dreamer did not have a good impression so it kind of takes away from that. And then the other butterfly I added um, where I didn't get a good impression on the bike so I kind of masked it a little bit. Then I decided that that little bird, uh, it was originally on the fabric was sitting on a twig and I decided that it needed to be sitting somewhere because I cut off its legs. Um, 
because I couldn't cut it with the scissors that were too small. So I kind of just grabbed a scrap of paper, um, got some of the ink, buffered it around, and then used that wood um, stamp to kind of add some wood impression on there. And then I went in with my micro line and kind of added some more lines and then used my gel medium to seal it down. And then I just do little feet for this bird. Then I end up using the archival ink in um, sepia and coffee and I do it on the borders of this canvas. And originally I wanted um, to have some script, handwritten script, so it looks, you know, just more whimsical. Uh, and then I took it off because I didn't like it. So luckily because I had a slick surface, it was able to get removed. Then I go in with my small little stamps um, and I write travel, explore, and journey and then stand tall and then with another recollections um, stamp set uh, I write uh, dream big so stand tall and dream big and that is the little distress area that you see at the top where the word grace is that I did and these are the finished pictures I hope you enjoyed the process I hope you got inspired if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.